Hello, I'm Jeff Boyd, and I want to introduce to you Lewis Little, Dr. Lewis Little, who has a new theory of physics called the Theory of Elementary Waves. Dr. Boyd. Uh, welcome, I'm, I'm Lewis Little, and I'd like to give a brief introduction to the Theory of Elementary Waves for professional physicists. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you have a, a knowledge of quantum mechanics. I'd like to take you back to the time of the Einstein-Bohr debates. And as I'm sure you know, Einstein was of the view that um, nothing in physical reality can happen by chance. That there always has to be a reason for it. And quantum mechanics appear to show that certain phenomena in subatomic physics had to occur by chance. Einstein was of the view that the seeming uh, lack of determinism in quantum mechanics uh, couldn't be the case. Uh, as he put it, that uh, the famous quote that God doesn't play dice with the world, uh, he maintained that nothing can happen by chance. And he attempted to fix quantum mechanics and fix some of the weirdness by adding hidden variables. No such hidden variables could remove the uncertainty or as we think of it today, the non-locality. Um, and that was the resolution of those debates at the time. Now, what I believe Einstein should have recognized is if a theory is merely incomplete, so it, it, it is missing some parts, but is correct as far as it goes, the correct but incomplete theory is not going to lead to contradictions, to claims that some things are what they aren't, or that things happen for no reason, or whatever. Um, the proofs that there was no way to fix quantum mechanics basically proved that there had to be something wrong with the theory already as it stood. Now, if so, well, the immediate question is, how is it that the equations of quantum mechanics work so well? They seem to work perfectly in every kind of phenomenon we've discovered. Well, if they do, but there's a problem, this suggests a symmetry principle of some kind, where we know that you can transform a system and end up with another one that obeys the same equations. Perhaps this is happening with quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics is on the wrong side of the symmetry, so to speak. Now, I believe this is the case. The symmetry in question is the reciprocity principle uh, in scattering, which says basically that a wave coming from, uh, from uh, point, point A and scattering off some target and then scattering out from there, and if you have a detector somewhere to detect uh, the intensity of the wave, that the amount, the intensity of wave that arrives at the detector is exactly what you'd expect if the same wave were coming from the detector, scattering off the same target, and an amount of it would arrive back at the source. If you have a, a wave coming from a source and scattering off at the target of some kind, with some intensity arriving at a detector. And you compare that to the very same wave being emitted from the location of the detector, scattering off the same target with an intensity arriving at the source. The intensity arriving at the source in this case is always going to equal the intensity arriving at the detector in the other case. So what if we could develop a theory where the probability that a particle gets to the detector is based on the intensity of a wave arriving at the particle source rather than the intensity of the wave arriving at the detector as in quantum mechanics. Now, immediately this solves a few very difficult problems. In quantum mechanics, the wave coming, if the particle is like a wave particle, whatever, a wave scatters off a target, it scatters in all directions, and when a particle leaves the target, it could go in most any direction, 
And as is well known, there's no local way to compute the probability that a particle goes one way or the other. It has to make some sort of a choice of which direction to go, and this would require either a non-local interaction over the entire volume or require treating it as a wave particle or something like that. In the reverse wave theory, the waves are going in the opposite direction of the particle. In the direction that a particle is going, the waves are coming together, the, the trajectories, not apart. When a particle leaves a target, it's going to be following waves coming from the detector and basically it has only one way to go. It can only go in the direction of that detector from which its wave is coming. And it simply uh, detects uh, the direction from which it's coming and moves in that direction. So immediately you see that there's no difficulty in understanding how a particle can follow these waves in a local manner without the weirdnesses that are involved in quantum mechanics. Another factor that makes this theory uh, much better is the unpredictability as to which location a particle will go to depends on the variables that are in the source. And those variables will determine you know, which of the waves from all the different directions it will respond to. Now, when that occurs, all of the wave interference for this reverse wave has already taken place. There's no, no problem of a particle trying to follow a wave while it is interfering. And the source merely responds to the intensity of the wave. So one can conceive of an ordinary probability distribution over variables in the source to explain this unpredictability. One simply doesn't know the value of those variables. So one should be able to develop a theory with particles following waves locally and with the unpredictability being explainable by a probability over the value of unknown variables. Now, of course, the big question is, where do these waves come from? Um, my theory is that the waves really are very much like what we currently call available states. They're around all the time. They're not the particle. The waves coming from a detector are always there, whether or not a particle is following them, just like the available states are always available. And um, when a particle moves, it moves by following this wave. So what if we try to apply this to the double slit experiment? In the double slit experiment, um, one would have a screen with a couple of open slits, and a wave goes through those two slits and will form a pattern on a screen. Uh, so I'll indicate like that. And consider one particular point on the screen. This theory says that the wave involved is coming from that point and going the other way through the two slits. And again, the, the degree of interference at the source is going to be the same as occurs at the screen in quantum mechanics. The path difference is the same. I mean, it's the same two paths, so the amount of interference clearly will be exactly the same. Um, so that the wave will come from that point, will go the other way, and the intensity at the source then determines the probability that a particle, when it's emitted, will follow the wave coming from that point rather than the wave coming from some other point. These waves all, from every different point, have to be independent of one another. Um, the particle then, when it's emitted, will go on one path or the other. It doesn't matter which one because the overall probability of the process has been determined at the source upon the emission of the particle. It, the wave just has to get it to the point on the screen with probability 1 after it's emitted. So it can go either way, but only one way. It is not necessary that the particle go through both slits. The wave goes through both slits. The particle goes through only one of them. 
And the same is true for each and every point on the screen. So one will get exactly the same pattern when multiple particles come through, but you now have a theory where the particle is the particle, the wave is the wave, you can understand how the particle follows the wave, you can understand the source of the uh, unpredictability of the process as being variables in the source, and yet it will explain the pattern on the screen in every detail, quantitatively. So we know we're getting somewhere. According to quantum mechanics, it should have been impossible to account for this experiment in this manner. And within quantum mechanics, it is impossible, at least without the weirdness, or as I see it, in contradictions. Um, as long as one has a theory based on a wave coming from the source, one really cannot account for this experiment in a, a logical, physical way where you know, particles are particles and waves are waves and, and so forth. But with the reverse waves, it becomes um, understandable. So what we have here is a theory for the double slit that is both local and deterministic and yet it accounts for the experiment in every detail. This was supposed to be impossible in quantum mechanics. Uh, Richard Feynman has stated correctly that this experiment captures the whole problem of quantum mechanics. And um, problem solved. Here's a theory that will account for this experiment locally and deterministically. Clearly this pictorially refutes the basic conclusion of Bohr and the supporters of quantum mechanics that it's impossible to account for subatomic phenomena locally and deterministically. Now these, these reverse waves um, in this theory they look very much exactly like the available states of quantum mechanics. They're there all the time. They're not the particle, they're not emitted when the particle is emitted, um, but they are real things, unlike the available states that somehow are, I don't know, semi-real. Um, and as I said, they're in the environment all the time, and the particle is a separate thing, but it follows those waves in its motion. Uh, so they're not actually created at the point, rather they are waves uh, um, in, in my theory, they, they impinge on the point from all directions and the interactions at the point make them all coherent with each other so that they will interfere at the source uh, as if they were a single wave. Um, I submit this theory solves all of the weirdness problems of quantum mechanics. You can understand why it is that the wave or, or that the the interaction over the entire volume, in this case the two paths, will affect the outcome, but the particle need take only one of the paths, um, which in a way is the basic problem of quantum mechanics. How is it that the entire volume is involved and yet the particle is only located at one spot at any one time? Um, so this is basically, excuse me, basically the essence of the elementary wave theory, and uh, this can be carried over to all the other phenomena, and you end up with a local deterministic theory. One, one final point I wish to make. The wave that's coming from each point on the screen is not a time-reversed wave. This is not uh, the theory of Professor Kramer, where one has the transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics. In that theory, uh, going back to my target diagram again, in that theory a source is emitting a wave. It scatters off a target and goes off in all directions. The time reverse of that would be a wave coming in from all directions and somehow magically being coherent and producing the wave 
uh, coming in toward this source. Now that's not the wave that's involved in the elementary wave theory. In the elementary wave theory, whatever detection point you have, the wave is spreading out from there. It's the reciprocal wave, not the time-reversed wave. 